it had to be a, a black group of guys had to get together and start something uh, in BMX. I mean, I remember you was telling me about uh, Lane 8. What was Lane 8? Well, you got eight lanes in the starting gate. And Lane 8 is usually the outside lane. You kind of like want to get in the inside. And What did they call it? Well, I came up with the brother lane. Because <laughs> we would go to these nationals, and it was like I had my buddy Anthony Freeman. He's from Inglewood and a couple of other guys. And, uh, and my buddy uh, Chris Sanchez, you know, it was a Mexican guy. And then you had my friend Larry Mears and Brian Roos and all these other white guys. So we go on stage, and they like, Sweets, eight, Freeman, seven, <laughs> Mitchell, six. I'm like, damn, why are you putting all the dark-skinned people <laughs> So after a while, it start happening again and again. I'm like, wait a minute, shit, why you, there's something's up with this. Why y'all, why am I always getting lane eight? So we just start, hey, I'm got, you got the brother lane. So you got the brother lane, lane eight. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Life After Sports 23. We're here with BMX legend, <laughs> stud man, Eric Sweets. You know what I mean? It's, hey, welcome to the show, man. Thank you Th for having me. Yeah. What's going on, Easy? What's happening? What's up, James? <laughs> God bless to be here with you, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure, man. For sure. So, so tell our fans, what, what is BMX? You can start at the top. BMX. There you go. For, for those one, that don't Greg. know, it's bicycle motocross where it's kind of like emulated motorcycle, motocross riding. Started back in like 70, 75 mm -hmm. in, in California in the dirt, you know, dirt lots. And then it got organized basically in like, probably like 81. So what, 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 made, you, what made you get into it? Right. Well, BMX, uh, I was always like into bikes. You know, I was a kid, I would just always ride my bike and and like White World of Sports used to come on, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always yeah, watch yeah. Evil Knievel on, on go, Saturday. Go outside and make a ramp. Yeah, yeah, I would go outside and make a ramp. I'm like, I'm going to go make a ramp. One time I put this ramp in a board. My buddy's like, yeah, put this rock right here. I'm like, <laughs> so I went all the way down to the corner and it teetered. Nobody told us about teeter-totter. So, so when I hit it, it teeter-tottered. I went face first into to the concrete, bust my lip. Wow. And then, you know, I was just always riding bikes. Now, all the sports in, in the United States for black kids are playing in the hood. Especially California. California, anyway. <laughs> I mean, y'all got base, y'all got the best weather. <laughs> right. You got baseball, basketball, football. What make a black kid from South Central Los Angeles jump on the BMX? Like I said, I was always in the bikes. And then I had a cousin that moved from L.A. to Carson back in the 80s. You know, Carson was predominantly white, so... And then his dad had a lot of money, so he had motorcycles and skateboards. He had all the shit that I didn't have. <laughs> you didn't have. He, he, he had all the shit that I didn't have, right? So, you know, you, the cousin you yeah. looked up to. So I would go to his house, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> I was riding his bike and his motorcycle. And so I was like, he got, he kind of like turned me on to it. And then I was going to school in the valley. Like, my mom bust me to the valley because she didn't want me going to the school in the hood. So. But that was around the time the gang banging was real heavy, yeah, like wasn't 80, it? 80s, yeah, in the 80s. It was gang banging, so I went to school in the valley, and I met this guy named uh, Steve Newman, and he was, he was racing, and he, I was like, dude, I want to race. He's like, you can spend the night at my house. His mom called my mom, and I, I spent the night that weekend, and we went to this uh, racetrack in Van Nuys called a Teen Center. That was like the mecca of BMX. Everybody that was somebody was at the Teen Center in Van Nuys, and that's how I got hooked. And then they finally made a track in Gardena, California, by my house called Ascot, Ascot. And uh, I just started racing. I borrowed my friend's bike and started racing. How, how old were you when you when you you uh, really you know when you, your first professional race? How old were you when you turned pro? Uh, I, never, I turned pro when I was probably like 22. But, but, but I, I I started racing like from 80 81 to 84, and I quit. You know. I mm -hmm. graduate, you know, we get a car and women, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, you know hanging out. You got girls, yeah. like you can't put them on the China nah, bars. Like, huh? Yeah, fuck this bike. <laughs> car. You know, in LA, I had a, had a Nissan truck. Oh, so okay. I was chasing hoes, jacking, hey, jacking in love with yeah, them yeah, Nissan yeah, trucks. Yeah, you know, still. But then I, uh, then I got with my ex-wife, and then I had a son, and I was like, oh, I need to start back racing. You know, I, I went and bought a magazine. I'm like, oh shit, I gotta do this. You know, mm -hmm. I start back racing like '89, so I raced from '89. To like 99. 
Well, E, can you give me a little history about the BMX? Uh, from where it began, why, what made it so interesting to, to, to young black kids or young kids, period, about BMX? Where, where did it begin? I think most kids like, you know, riding bikes and jumping off curves. And BMX, I tell people it's like a adrenaline rush. To me, it's an adrenaline rush. It's like a roller coaster, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like I get in, I get in stage and I'm like, dang, I got to beat. Seven of these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, yeah, I get the you butterflies, know. you know. But as soon as I get in the gate, and the gate goes, the butterflies go out the window, and you go around the track. It's like, it's like riding a roller coaster. Yeah, it's kind of the same way that we have when we, when you know. National you, Anthem. National <laughs> Anthem. You know, <laughs> when you up at your first bat or <laughs> it's, butterflies. it's yeah, the that. first play of a football game, we get the same thing that you get. Yeah, it's such yeah. a thing. So, so, but, but also touch a little bit, how many people look like you out on that track? Not too many. And it's the, not. It's not that many. It's more now, but when I first started, it was. It wasn't that many. But, it wasn't that many blacks. So did you guys? You know, like in baseball, we had we, we had a tendency to gravitate towards one another. You know what I mean? Because it's not. You know, they don't know what we go through or what we, you know, what's going on at home, yeah, yeah. The, you know, the, the stuff we have to go through sometimes, you know what I mean? So, you, I mean, you need someone to bounce that off of. So did you guys gravitate towards each other on the track or, but, or was it just, hey, one for all, you know what I no, mean? No, no, we, we, we had a, like a knit group of people, you know, I hung out with some of my friends. Some of them started racing, some of them fell off. And we all, we always stick together, you know what I mean? And, and the guys in the sport, like, I'm known for the fast first straight. Like, like Sweets got the first straight. Like, he going to beat us to the first <laughs> turn. Yeah, you know. And then they like, how you get so fast? I said, because hood sprints. <laughs> hood sprint. I said, shit. If you, if you want to keep your bike, you got you to gotta sprint everywhere you went. You know yeah, what I mean? I thought he was talking about, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. Man, man, man. He's yeah. like, he, he didn't want nobody to take his bike, man. <laughs> I was like, hey, homie, let me ride your bike. I'm like, no, shit. Because you know you weren't getting that bike no, bike, right? No, because my dad, and it, it, the funny thing is, I had a, like a Huffy, and he was, I was like, Dad, I want to race. He's like, you got a Huffy. I was like, I can't go to the track with this shit. He's like, well, how much does a bike cost? It was like $300 back in the 80s. Wow. You know what I mean? My dad, $300. I ain't paying no damn $300 for no bike. You got a Huffy. But I finally convinced him. He's like, here. He told my mom, here, girl, take that boy down here and, and put that bike on railway. So my mom put like $20 railway. I still have the, the railway receipt today. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's what's Amen. up. Man. So he put it on layaway. He got his income tax. <laughs> and he got it out. And then he said, look, you ain't going to get another one. So you get this shit stolen. <laughs> that's it. That's how you got fast and straight. Yeah, because huh? yeah, I, I had to sprint everywhere I went. And it also and, deterred you away from the gang banging yeah, by yeah, being yeah, on that yeah. bike, didn't it? Kept yeah, you on the streets. Kind of, because I had to stay away from them because they wanted to steal my bike. <laughs> 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 you know, they were always like, let me steal you, let me, we, we, and then, yeah, I got ridiculed by them, well, you a white boy, you doing that white boy shit. That's something yeah, I was yeah. going to ask you, okay, uh, about, you know, you go to the track, you're not accepted, you come back to the hood, you they're got the accepted. white boy uh, clothes on, yeah. you got the, the, vans. the vans and the big pants, yeah. you're not accepted, where did you feel more comfortable where where was your comfort zone? Track, track. Did like, or did you even about, care? I, I, did you care about what I, people were saying about at you? At first, I did. Okay, you know, I come on with like, it. I was like, you know, I was like, oh, I'm doing this. They gonna talk about me, but then I didn't care. At, at some point, I said, I'm doing what I like to do. Yeah, you're doing okay. what you love, right? I love, yeah, I don't. You can talk about me all you want, and that's funny. Like all the all the gangbangers, old dudes that were talking shit about me. Now they all broke down. Oh man, you still riding them bike? Oh, I, I knew you was gonna do it. I'm like, man, get out. Of here. <laughs> you know, and now it's cool. You know what I mean? But it wasn't like I say, it wasn't that many blacks doing BMX or skateboarding because there was no X Games and all this other stuff back then. So we kind of stood out because you were doing. A predominantly white sport. Mm-hmm. You look at it now, like you said, the X Games. You do you ever think about? Dang, I wish I had that opportunity. Yeah, I, you, 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 you know, know what I mean. I wish it, they had it back then. Yeah. Did you? You know, we have a track back home in Northern Cap, Prairie City. You ever go to Prairie City? I heard, uh, I heard Prairie, Prairie, Prairie City. City. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but it, that's the thing. It was a NorCal versus SoCal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. NorCal, NorCal pull, SoCal pull. Yeah, it yeah. was always like 
and, and see, I'm from the Midwest. Uh, we didn't, we never picked up the the BMX thing. You know what I mean? Now we we jump ramps and we made ramps and we did the skateboarding thing. But you guys on the West Coast, you got in in Florida. I think right. those two places really took that BMX really serious. Probably, probably Texas, and, yeah, too. In, in Texas, because Texas, you think about yeah, it. Yeah. But what's the one thing we all have in common? Weather. Weather. Right, right. <laughs> Weather. So you guys can be outside all the time. Yeah. So um, I know that um, it had to be a, a black group of guys had to get together and start something uh, in BMX. I mean, I remember you was telling me about uh, Lane 8. What was Lane 8? Well, you got eight lanes in the starting gate. And lane eight is usually the outside lane. You kind of like want to get in the inside. And what did they call it? Well, I came up with the brother lane. Because <laughs> <laughs> we would go to these nationals and it was like I had my buddy Anthony Freeman. He's from Inglewood and a couple of other guys. And, uh, and my buddy uh, Chris Sanchez, you know, it was a Mexican guy. And then you had my friend Larry Mears and Brian Roos and all these other white guys. So. We go on stage and they like, Sweets, eight, Freeman, seven, <laughs> Mitchell, six. I'm like, damn, why are you putting all the dark-skinned people <laughs> So after a while, it start happening again and again. I'm like, wait a minute, shit, why you, there's something up with this. Why y'all, why I'm always getting lane eight? So we just start, hey, I'm got, you got the brother lane. Sweets, you got the brother lane, lane eight. So then I started coming up with the lane eight pull. I said, I'm going to pull your ass from lane eight. It's called pull, pull is when you like, Pull away from people, mm -hmm. you know. So I was like, "All right, I'm gonna pull away and I'm gonna cut you off." <laughs> and, and I just start practicing from lane eight. So because you knew that's where you're gonna be. Yeah. So I, yeah. So if I got lane eight, if I can beat you from lane eight, I can beat you anywhere. So but let me ask you this: So say, you know, like you know, like Olympic trials or you know something like that. Say you have qualifying. You know what I mean? You, so even after you qualified and your times are better, they still put you out there. Well, now it's like a random. They got some before they had they had like a hamster trail, too, and a, and, a, uh, and you kept some, in some in ping pong balls in there. Yeah, and they would shake it up and then the balls drop down. Well, how in the hell you kept yeah. in it up in eight? Well, I, that's what I don't know. But then they changed it. It was they like it had random random gate picks like the computer picked the gate. But I was like, how the hell am I always getting the outside lanes? You know what I mean? The, the, how, how many? What was it like to win your first race in a sport that wasn't? You know that you weren't expected to win it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like when I was a kid. I really didn't start winning till I got to like twenty. I was getting like seconds and thirds. And but you kept you coming back. Yeah, I never. But, I never turned expert. I was just intermediate. So what? What? What kept you getting second, third? I Lane mean, eight. it was they, that. <laughs> well, I mean, was it that they was that much better? Were they Was it the training or what? I always had like they, they say, oh, like you got the brother speed because you know, black people are known for like it's a, it's a sprint race. Basically, yeah. it's like a sprint race on a bike. So if you can, most black dudes that race BMX, they they're fast down. You know, they got the speed. But then you can't jump. That's like the only sport they say black dudes can't jump. <laughs> but they would tell me, oh, sweet, you can't jump. I was like, yeah, but I, it don't matter. As long as, I, as long as I beat you, you know what I mean? I, that's all that matters. But back then, I was think I was just racing. You know what I mean? I wasn't like trying to. I was just racing until just, I got to a point where I was like, wait a minute. I got to start. And, all right, I'm already fast. Now I got to focus on, you know, going over the jumps, getting backside, knowing how to turn keeping my speed, keeping my track speed, and not till I start focusing on that, I start doing better. I, I didn't win my first national until I was probably 40, 40 something. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, I, and then uh, when I moved here in, two, I moved to Vegas in 2008, and I didn't have, have anything to do, and I was like, oh, I need to go get my bike. So I went and got my bike, and I came back, and they had a national at South Point. And I hadn't, that was in 2008, and I hadn't raced since 2000. So what kind of conditioning do you need to be in? Do, do, do you guys train or you train? Right, yeah. Okay, it's, okay. It, it's fast muscle twitch. Okay. So you do squats. A lot plyo, of leg, a lot of plyo, 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 plyo. A lot of plyo. Explosive type stuff. Explosive. How, how long does a, how many laps is a, a sprint race like you were saying? It's not even a minute. It depends on how long. Oh, really? It's just one? It's, it's one? Just, yeah, it's one. It's like it's, a it's one lap. One lap. Yep. You have you have qualifying. You have two rounds of qualifying. 
you qualify. So basically, that. y'all running a uh, hundred meters, <laughs> but it looks like a quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you know, in, in so you qualify. They take the first two out of the first. Mo- it's called a moto. First two out the first moto, and it depends how many riders there are. And then you have quarters, quarterfinals, semis, and then. Right. Main. I, I mean, the how's the the financial benefits of BMX racing now? Is it all about sponsorship now? Yeah. Is, 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 yes. Yeah. But back back when I was a kid, like pros can make money. They were buying houses and they were getting cars, <laughs> and you know, right now is the money's not that. Cause it used to be the NBL National Bicycle League, and there's the ABA American Bicycle Association. But American Bicycle Association bought out the NBL, so now it's just ABA. So, so they, they control got, it. They, so they got a control over. It. You know, and they can manipulate, like, oh, this is the only sanction we have, so you just got to deal with it. And they want, and, and BMX is not that big, so they want to keep a lot of these big outside sponsorships out so they can control it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I wouldn't re- recommend nobody turning pro. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you know, it, you ain't going to really make no money. Well, tell, <laughs> well, tell us this. Um, I know I've sat down and spoke with you about... Uh, the documentary you're doing on BMX, right. black, black riders, BMX. black BMX. Can you give uh, our audience some uh, some some insight on that? Uh, so yeah, uh, I came up with the idea to do this documentary because one of my friends he was going to do a documentary about the black BMXers, and he got a job at the sanction, and then he couldn't do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Put him in a and Trick it, yeah, 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 you know, it was like, you know, I was like, oh, shoot, so I'm going to do it. You know, I end up start doing it like three years ago. I just want to tell a story of how, you know, a lot of people don't know what black BMXers contributed to the sport. And a lot of people don't know what we go through because predominantly a lot of us come from the inner city and there's no tracks in the inner city. You know what I mean? So, like I say, I went through getting called a nerd and a white boy and you're doing this. So, you know, that kind of plays on you. <laughs> yeah. And then you go to these races that they don't really see, see too many black people. And they're looking like, oh, what are you what doing What's this nigga here? doing yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like in a documentary, uh, this guy, Mark Throw, he's from Vegas. So he started racing pro like in the 80s. And he has a, a story where he went to Corona, California and he showed up at the race, and the dude goes, what are you doing here? This ain't no basketball game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just ignorance everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Just, 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 just ignorance. People don't. It's just stigma. You, yeah, know, it's, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah. Yeah, so he's like, yeah. This, and then he won, and he pulled out his $500. He goes, yeah, it sure ain't no basketball <laughs> game, huh? <laughs> right. Yeah, so just, just stuff like that. I really haven't really been... Subject to like real racism in the sport, but you know you can I can tell you can feel it. Yeah, they just don't say it. it. Yeah, yeah. They you just can, don't say it. You can people. You can look at people and tell like, wait a minute, you ain't you ain't feeling me. But so who who dominates the sport? Is it um is it um what culture actually dominates that sport? I mean, it's kind of like no culture really dominates, but like the majority of the racers are white. Okay, you know I mean, it's not that many blacks. But the, some of the blacks that do race, they dominate because, you, you know, we're known for running fast. Like, there's a, a girl, Dominique Daniels, she was from, uh, she was a pro, and she's from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and she won the women's pro title five years straight. Nice. Five years straight, she won the title. <clears throat> Nobody can beat her, but then she didn't jump. <laughs> you know, she had thighs and hips. So she was fast, but she didn't jump. Mm-hmm. So they end up changing the, uh, oh, the track. The they track. put in more jumps oh, to, make her, to make her jump. To slow her down. To slow her down. Wow. Yeah. 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 So that's what you, that's what you was uh, explaining us about. You didn't jump. Yeah. And that's what they was uh, mocking you about. Oh, right. yeah, sweet, uh, you my, yeah, sweet, you can't jump. Yeah. Okay. At first, because <clears> I was kind of <throat> lost. I didn't understand. Jump, jump. There's some jumps you have to jump. You know okay, what I mean? So when you come off of it, you have to go yeah, with it. you have to jump. Man. Okay. It's I, not I didn't like jumping. I just don't like crashing. Right. <laughs> that shit hurts. Hey, man. Hey. You hey, know what I mean? I tell people all the time, people who want to hit the ball, the golf ball in the air, that ball don't have to go in the air. Right. That ball get in the air and do a lot of dumb things. 
And like you were saying with the jumping, you get up in the air, you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I jump when I have to. Okay. You know, I mean? yeah, but you know when you got to race, you got to jump. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Yeah, right, yeah. But you you prefer to keep it on the ground in in, yeah. in the full out sprint. As long as okay. I beat you, it doesn't matter if I jump. Let, right. me, let me ask you this, Reese. So you know, I mean, look at the Olympics and you look at the short track, you know, on, on, on the bikes. Do you ever think mm -hmm. about doing anything like that? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, well, yeah, they yeah, got yeah, the, yeah, the BMX in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, well, not the not just the BMX, but you know the, the regular bike track. You know when they go oh, around the, oh, like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, like the velodrome, the over, the, the yeah, velodrome. The, yeah, the oval and all that. No, I'm, no? I, I, that's too much. <laughs> I'm a sprinter. <laughs> Straight BMX in your heart. Yeah, yeah, I'm a sprinter. I don't like riding long distance. No, no. I don't like riding. No, that'd be a trip though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because wow. you know that's a sprint too. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. You know those bikes that they're on? That, that's... Well, well, man, um, we're looking forward to seeing your documentary, man. And, um, bro, I can't wait because I, me as a black man, not understanding the BMX history, I would love to see it. And I hope uh, our audience out there would love to see it, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and like James said, you know, I know a little bit about it because, you know, growing up in California, you know, you, you, right. you do know something about it. But once, once again, you know, Life After Sports 23 is a platform to broaden everyone's horizon, to, to give people a chance to doing something different and not be, you know, categorized or thrown into one type right. of pool. You know, there's a lot of, you know, p kids like you that like riding bikes, you know, they, right. they see you, maybe you can influence them to ride bikes, you know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, and hopefully you influence people that, you know, to look like us to go out and sponsor these kids, not just in basketball, football, right, right, and, right. you know, just do, give them other opportunities. You know what I mean? Well, you know, because that's what life is. It's about opportunities. It's not what you do, it's who you know. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, ho hopefully, you know, th this will be a eye-opening to some, some kids that aren't good in baseball, well, basketball, football, whatever. Right, right, you, know right. what I mean? you know, you can open up doors because a lot of inner city kids, they don't, they don't, like when I, like this, I was telling this guy this story, this guy's trying to get my documentary out and it's kind of funny, it's kind of, it's kind of messed up. When I was a kid, I used to think white kids have more fun than black kids. Cause you see white kids on TV <laughs> doing all this shit and you don't see no black kids. And I was like, why you don't see no? Like, so for a long time, I was like, damn, we, we just don't- Have fun. You have fun, you know? And I just took the initiative to like, look, I'm just going to be different. <laughs> I'm not going to go down the same basketball, football. Like I said, I was too skinny to play football. I didn't like getting hit. <laughs> And, and, and in baseball, it was just too boring. Basketball, I'm probably the only black dude. I can tell you right now, they, I ain't going to get picked. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the last person getting picked yeah, in the park. Yeah, I'm the not person. <laughs> Pick me. You don't know how to play no basketball. <laughs> but I'll beat your ass on a bike. <laughs> so I kind of like gravitated oh, to that. You know, I, mean? I, just, I, just, I just wanted I wanted a trophy right then. And when you race BMX, you win, you get a trophy. <laughs> You know what I mean? I used to go in the magazine like, dude, this dude had all these trophies in it. It's like, oh shit, I want a trophy. So my buddy played baseball. He had to work, play a couple week months to get a trophy. <laughs> That's it. They did good, right? Should I go to the track, come home with a trophy? And I was that was my whole thing. I and, just and your parents supported it. And your parents supported it. Yeah, my, my parents supported it. My dad supported it. He just gave my mom the money and dropped me off. You know how that shit go. To one time, I, I qualified for a race here, and he was like, "Oh, you going to Vegas?" I'm like, "Oh, now you want to take me somewhere? <laughs> hey, you going to go to Vegas?" Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he 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 supports me. My That's mom cool. supported me. You know. cool. well, but you said you had. Did you say you had a son did, did, earlier? Or you had a. Oh, I got two sons. What do they do? They race. I told him I gotta keep fucking racing. Like I keep name stop. My, my oldest son, I, when he was three, I took him. No, five. I took him to the track, and he went around and, and he needed to ask me to take him back. And I'm like, all right, scratch. <laughs> so then I had my daughter, and I like she don't want to race. And then my youngest son, I bought him a bike and I took him to the track, and he was like, all right, boy, you gotta keep the sweet name going so I can mm -hmm. retire. And he didn't want to go. I was like, damn, I gotta keep racing. <laughs> uh, so are you you're producing your own documentary yourself, right? You the producer and yeah, director. I'm the producer, the director, the director, the editor, editor, editor. the camera guy, okay. the, uh the financial man yeah, up to okay. a point. I ran out of money, but <laughs> Okay. You know, Good thing you fast though, dog. You can get around and yeah, push yeah. all those buttons or something. Yeah, yeah. And then people ask me, why you name it Black the BMX? I said, because I wanted to name it that. <laughs> I, I wanted to name it something to catch people's attention. The hook, but, but but that's how you felt. I mean, right, that's, yeah. well, what were you supposed to name it? Did you know. ask then, him? Yeah, then this guy, well, you, you trying to that's a division, you 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 being racist. I was like, come on, bro, like, how why am I racist? Because I'm telling a story about, about your about, life, about, about my life, 
You're black, but you can't. You can, you can only tell it's a black right, right, right. right. Yeah. And then he's like, "Well, no, you racist. You're trying to, you know, divide the races, and we need to be all coming together." Did, did you like, ask him did he get lane eight? I was like, "Nah." <laughs> I, I, he probably. I said, "You don't. I'll probably even whoop you, bro. Don't even worry about it." You know. So I'm like, "Well, all these other like these movie studios, they make slave movies and all this other stuff, <laughs> and, and they don't say anything. So why you want to criticize me? It's about me. It's about my people. <laughs> you know." It's about people that don't even understand BMX. You know, I mean, a lot of black people in the Midwest, we didn't, we didn't know what it was. You guys on the West Coast, you, you guys knew what it was. Right. We, we were just riding bikes, right. having fun, jumping ramps, killing ourselves because of Evil Knievel. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you guys had an art to it. And uh, me as a man from the uh, Midwest, I, I, I respect it after I watched some of the footage. Man, I'm like, man, I wouldn't have done yeah, that. Yeah, the, the footage is tight. And, and, and like I said, you know, that's once again, <laughs> it's a free country, right? Can't you name it to what you want to name it? Yeah. That's not division. It was division when they put you in lane eight. Right. Tell them the name, <laughs> tell them the name of it again. Uh, uh, Black to BMX. Black to BMX. Documentary, yep. All yep. right. So he was like, oh, yeah. I was like, well, thanks for all. And then he's, he had all these people comment i said thanks for the free publicity bro. Like, <laughs> like thanks now you now you're gonna have people want to see it yeah. you know like that's they're what you're interested you want. in it like you know what i mean so people always interested in things that they and don't it, understand it's not, it's not it's not i want everybody to watch it you know white black mexican you know because it's a story inside a story and it can show people that you can be different and you can do something different and be successful because it takes a lot of discipline People think, oh, yeah, oh, it's easy. No, no, it's not easy riding that bike around the track. Right. You know, I've heard, oh, that's easy. I can do it. And I give them a bike and they say, shit, I don't want to do this shit. Yeah. So, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff comes into focus for you to win. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys know yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah but, sports. but like you said, though, too, it wasn't just, you know, you, you didn't fit in at home when you got back home from the track. You know what I mean? <laughs> Did you, you know, so, I mean. It's your life, man, and like I said, man, people dying on that flag. There's them stars are for everyone to do it, you know, to have the freedom of speech, freedom to tell their story and do it your way, and you know that's what they died for. You know what I mean? They didn't die for someone to tell you they can do it this way, and then you can't do it this way. Exactly. Your story's your story. Right. Your truth is your truth. Right. You don't like the, the truth hurts, like like. <laughs> yeah, if you, you know what? Because you know maybe they don't understand it, don't want to hear it. That's your truth. Yeah. We all have our truth, and like, you know that it is what it is. Like my dad tell me, he he was a marine. He's like, at the end of the day, forget what they think about you, because you're gonna be in the box by yourself. <laughs> 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 ain't nobody gonna be in there with you. Fuck what they say. Ain't nobody jumping in there. Ain't nobody jumping in there with you. Nobody jumping in there with you. Nobody gonna be a mix ride. Yeah, yeah, no, like you ain't coming. Back. Be who. Say what you. That's what I get from him. Say say what you mean and mean what you say. You know, don't bite your tongue and stand on what you. Mean, you well, know, one so. thing you did do, you broke a chain and built your own dream. Yeah. And that's what we see a lot here on our show is breaking chains and building dreams. And uh, you broke away from that uh, I can't do or someone holding you back. You got away from it and built your own dreams. And, man, yeah. EZ, I'm proud to yeah. say it's good to know you. And thank you thank for you. coming on our show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> like, like I tell the dudes in, that I race nowadays, I was like, I'm here. I ain't here to win. I'm just here to make sure you don't win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I that's like it. I I'm like here that. to make sure your ass don't hey, win. Like, yeah. Can't sweet you asshole. <laughs> a lot of people don't like me because I'm outspoken. You know what I mean? I just say I'm not fake. That's right. So I go to the races and you go to win. No, you don't come yeah, to say yeah, you don't I, go to come like, say I don't go there. I don't go there to lose. <laughs> You know, be like, oh, I didn't get the results I wanted. I cut you. You didn't practice. Right. Like, you know, and like, and like when I when I first started racing, it was no social media, right? So it right. was magazines, and only the best people got in the magazines. But now with social media, you don't even have to be good to be irrelevant. You know what I mean? All you, you have to do just, is know how to yeah, punch you got a all these dudes pu posting all these training videos, and then they go to the race, and then they get they get Lines. beat. Like, well, no, but that's the same thing, you know. Like now, all these guys are baseball hitting coaches right. and they ain't never got a hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and if people are taking all their kids, you know, at eight years old, eight years old, what kid need a hitting coach at eight years old? Man, right. you need to learn how to swing and miss, exactly. understand the game of baseball, fall down, run, because you become a robot. Right. Eight years old, you know, you know what I mean? Eight, eight years old, I'm going to go to somebody's garage. Man, we got kids, people all over the place charging people. Like you said, they're putting the houses up for mortgage to freaking go get lessons at eight years old, seven years old. You got the same and, thing in BMX. Yeah, mm -hmm. putting their houses up 
Let the kid be a kid and then put the bat down and go play something else and go do something else. You, got, you, you, you know what I mean? It's crazy. You got these people spending all this money on all these bikes, all these parts, and they still get beat. I'm like, I'm going to beat you on a raggedy ass bike. Because when I was part racing, my bike was raggedy. The chain, <laughs> the chain hit me, the handlebars, you know, like, my bike sucked. <laughs> but we, we, that's all we had. So I'll just, I would just ride what I had. And a lot of people, they think just because they got a good bike, it's, I tell you, it's, it got to be in you. A lot of, it's a lot of people are racers, but now I'm a competitor. See, there's difference. There, there's difference in trying, because you know a lot of people say I try. How much effort is it to try? None. 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 But to compete, you got to sacrifice something, and it, it has to mean something. It, I mean, it has. You have to be willing to do a lot. You got to go through some adversity, just, right? Yeah, to like, compete. Yeah. yeah you got to get punched in the mouth and get yeah, back up. Yeah. I, I, it's a couple of races. I like. I tell people I'm not the fastest. I can, like I can't jump. <laughs> but when I get on the gate, I say, I'm going to beat Why you. Why you ass. can't jump, man? I mean, I could jump, but I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not the best jumper. Yeah, your, so your, your I, strength I, is. I, I just tell myself, I'm, I'm going to beat your ass, right? <laughs> and, I, you know, it's, it's like men, like most sports is mental. It's 80% mental. And I say 97. 99. And another uh, 100% is physical. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 there's a story. I tell you a story. Okay, I went to Houston a couple years ago, and then they had this big hill, right? It's like. <laughs> two meter hill and you go all the way down the hill and they had this jump where it was like called a step jump <laughs> but you couldn't you couldn't like we, we call it a manual so you keep your back tire down and you go over it. but it was so deep that you had to jump it so i flew all the way there and these dudes in my class like oh they i'm like you ain't gonna race no that's too dangerous i'm like dude you you guys is you guys are pussies like, <laughs> like you come all the way to houston and then you can't jump i can't jump and then you pull out so like i say i'm a I will myself to win, you know. I mean, I just tell myself I'm gonna I'm beat your ass, you know what I mean? And like a lot of times, I beat them. But but, but you know, but but, that, but that's your mindset going in, you know what right. I mean? If, if you think you're gonna win, you got a good chance to win. Right. But if you think you, you know, you I'm, I'm gonna finish, yeah. or I hope to, I do this, or I hope I finish second or third or fourth. Why are you here? Yeah, that's why I tell kids. I say you gonna win. I don't know. Then why are you saying you gonna? You know, why are you here? Why are you here? Tell yourself you are gonna win, even though you're not gonna win. Because you're not gonna win. Tell yourself you ain't gonna win. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know what I mean. And I try to tell kids that all the time. Like I, I, I give all the kids advice at the track. And like, look, you're here to win. Like, you know what I'm saying. End of the day. Winning. Tell, tell yourself you're going to win. I'll winning know, is a lifestyle. What, yeah, what do you, like, oh, we're just having fun. Losing is not having fun. <laughs> That's not a lifestyle. No. It could be a cheaper way to have fun, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I'm spending money, too. Like, shit, at least <laughs> yeah. I better win. Like, oh, like I don't want to go all spend all this money, go race, and then lose. And then my dad would, for a long time, my dad, like, I would come back, and he's like, boy, what place you get? I got second. He said, you can't ever get first. <laughs> I was like, you don't know how many people I had to beat to get second. Oh, man. But, but you know, they told you the truth back then, though. You know what I mean? Now it's like, it goes back to the participation, uh, participation, participation trophies. Yeah. And it goes back to, well, you try, you know, something. Yeah, everybody ain't going to be elite. Everybody, everybody ain't going to make on it. The team the, will get a trophy. You, you, you know, but you, I mean, I, I think it's a life lesson, though, right? Isn't it? Because. Yeah. It's so much bigger than the race or, or the game. It's about you as a person going out in, in the world. Right. We're trying to prepare you for the world. Right. The race is part of it. So if you learn at an early age how to win and prepare and fight and claw for something, you know, life is going to be a little bit easier for you. Right. you. You know what I mean? But if, if you ain't never fell and you're everybody taking care of you and, right. you, you know, getting your stuff ready and doing your, <laughs> waking you up. Right. My mom was at home, man. I had to wake up my brother and sister, man. It was time to go. Yeah. We had to go to school. You know what I mean? It's yeah. you, you, we have responsibility. We know to wash clothes, do chores, mm, do exactly. stuff. Yeah, we come from that area. Yeah, yeah. yeah we come from that yeah. area. Yeah, like you didn't do no kids. chores or do nothing. You didn't no, eat, dog. No. That's, 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 that's like why I, I said say, winning. Not... Winning is a lifestyle, yeah. man. And and you know, and, and 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 losing is a lifestyle because you find people that they lifestyle losing and they, they want, can't understand why because everything you do. But you prepare yourself to lose. But you gotta lose. Or don't to, prepare. To, or you, you gotta don't. lose. To to learn how to win. Yeah. You have to learn how to lose. Yeah, yeah. I'm about you learn about it. You, 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 you <laughs> have to. Yeah, you you learn how to lose, and that should motivate you. Just you want to win. Yeah. Like yeah. I tell, I tell the like uh, this is one race. They got this big race in Oklahoma every year. It's called the Grand Nationals. And a couple years ago, I went and and the, this kid's dad was like, "Oh, the first straight was real short." He goes, "Oh, this is this is un." This is not fair. This and that. I said, you want it easy. Winning is not easy. 
But it's the same track for everybody else too, yeah, right? Yeah, but winning. But you want your kid to have it easy to win. So what is that telling your kid? He's going to go work for his dad after he's done. Uh, That's all. Uh, I was like, come on. It's not like, That's right. And then I tell people, people see, because like I say, back when I came here, I wasn't that good. You know, I was getting fifths and sixths. And I finally put my head down and I trained. And it took me 10 years to start winning. I told people, it takes you 10 years to get good at something. But most people see people successful, don't know what they went to, to, to get Get to get to that point. They, they, just, they just see the, the end result. They don't see right. the journey. Right. They don't see, they, they don't see the, the journey. And, you know, I tell people all this all the time. Enjoy the journey because it makes the end result that much special. Yeah. You know what? You see the end result of everybody getting their hand raised. and the But you don't see these guys up at 5 in the morning. You don't see them, you know, getting up at 3, eating, eating right. right. You know, and, and they have kids and they have babies and they have all this stuff. You know. You're saying, but the perfect thing he ever said is, hey, you know, I hear people complain all the time. You know, they complain about, you know, I, I worked hard for this last month. He goes, I, hey, I worked hard for four years to rent for my, my goal to be over in eight seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? So don't, don't talk about how you worked hard. I worked hard for four years for it to be over Nine seconds, ten seconds, you know, whatever the, the sprint is, yeah, whatever. Sprint. Yeah, you know, it, it's over. So when people say work hard, it's, it depends on what their definition of work hard is. It's I'm weird when you, you have people uh, that says, you know, they'll see you and be like, "Man, how did he make it? He right. used to be out partying too." But see, they, like Greg said, they didn't see the stuff, the preparation be, before. Right. You know, I would come to the parties, but see, I got my work in before I got to the party. You know what I mean? So when I got to the party. I had already put my work in. Right. Now I can go and do what I want to do. You just went straight to the party. That's why me and you are a little different. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Or you stayed at the party. Or you stayed at the party a little, a little longer than I did. Right. You stayed at the party. You know, but I was at the party. Right. Right. I party as hard as you did, but I prepared myself because I saw something that I wanted later in life to, you know, to, to make myself successful. Right. But a lot of kids don't prepare, man. And that's why I always say, to be a winner, it's a lifestyle. But Winning is a lifestyle. It, it is a lifestyle, but I, I think it starts at home, man. It, 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 it comes with, you got to be able to do something besides breathe to, to, to live in my house. You know what I mean? You, you can't just breathe and, you know, you got you to go I got to tell this guy, he's like, man, you make it look so easy. I'm like, you didn't see how hard I, <laughs> I trained to make it look that easy. It looks that easy because you ain't doing you, it. You think it was easy for him to hit 50 home runs? No. You know, it's, that's a hard task. I mean, because... You got you got to play in the the fact of the 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 season. That's a long season. The game, the flights, the hotels, the different cities. You know what I'm saying? I, I tell people, man, for me to get through. Back then, we only played 15 games. To get through shit, to get through 10 games, it was hard back then. Right. You know, but my preparation was, man, I I would break it up in segments. You know what I mean? I needed to get through this four, get through this four, get through this four, and that's how I did. I did it in quarters. You know, and and, and, and you did it to eat. And turn on the light switch. <laughs> yeah. You did well, it to eat. And turn you on know the light that. switch. That's number one. <laughs> because when you hit the light switch, something got to happen. Yeah, man. Yeah, and if <laughs> you ain't performing, <laughs> then ain't gonna the light switch ain't gonna come on. Ain't no food, man. <laughs> but man, thanks, man. Yeah, thank I appreciate you, you sweet man. Thank appreciate you, brother, sweetie, for having me. Hey, man, bro. Mm.